Hi guys, uh, we have uh, a big presence here in Japan. It's a uh, Uriah Faber. It's a WEC champion. How's it going, eh? It's going good. I just got here this morning, and I slept all the way through the whole flight. So I was up bright and early at 5 a.m. and I went for a run around Tokyo, and I got lost. And uh, you know, it was actually kind of fun. You know, I was like. I knew I was in the vicinity, but there's so many big buildings. The food was good, and uh, I'm just getting started, so hopefully. Yeah, today we, we, we developed the UFC game. Uh, it's a, <laughs> we have a little bit fun, fun times, but uh, how do you think the, the UFC will work in Japan also, the, the big event coming to Saturday? I'm excited for it. You know, the Japanese fans are some of the most knowledgeable in the world, so, you know, the roots of mixed martial arts comes from Japan I feel and you know with the the notoriety of pride and with the history of Bushido and Dream and, and K1 and all this all the the shows that have been here before I think it's just a matter of time before the UFC takes off like wildfire and so I hope the Japanese fans can really get behind it I know sometimes it depends if it's kind of a trendy thing hopefully it will become a trendy thing here oh. Awesome. And uh, how, how do you think about the, the MMA, uh, female MMA? Because uh, we have a big fight in Saturday night, uh, Misha Tate against Rina Kai. It's a debut for Rina Kai. He have had a, a little bit pressure uh, in her, her performance. Uh, how do you think about that and how do you think about the, the MMA, uh, the female MMA right now in UFC? I think the female MMA is awesome. You know. Women are wild and, and a little bit crazy, and so you get them in a cage and train them how to beat each other up. It's awesome, and uh, I feel like you know it's it's something that's only going to get better with time. There's so many different characters and so many different personalities and, and a high level of skill that's starting to develop. So um, it's it's exciting for me to watch. And talking about you, uh, how, how is your body right now? You you get an injury and uh, you still rehab the recovery injury? You know, I'm always training. If I'm injured a little little place here, I, I work around it. Uh, I feel great. I have a couple little injuries, but that seems like my life, you know, as a professional fighter for over 11 years and as a wrestler for 20 some odd years, this is something that I'm accustomed to. So. Uh, I feel good. Um, I'm excited for my next fight, and I don't know exactly when that'll be or who against, but I'm always staying ready. And the, talking about your team, uh, the team of Ameo, uh, have a little di uh, difference with uh, the new coach, uh, Dwayne Ludwig. How do you think uh, Dwayne uh, can improve your team and uh, the striking skills again? Uh, on one example is uh, TJG Lachon. You know, TJ's been one of our top guys for a long time, so uh, it was just a matter of time before he got that strap, so we're all excited for him. Dwayne is actually gone from the team now and going to be helping out uh, periodically, but he moved back to Colorado, so we just brought in Martin Campman, and we have uh, Coach Joey, who's a boxing coach, and we have a guy, Sean Yarbrough, who's come down on occasion in addition to all of our other coaches. So. We got a big coaching staff, and it was great having Dwayne for the time he was there for you know a year and a half, a little over a year and a half. But uh, we're looking forward to learning some new stuff also. So it was, uh, you know, this team has been growing for the last 11 years, and each year has been a better year for us. And uh, talking about the, the your uh, t training partner Chad Mendes, he fought uh, next time in the revenge in Brazil uh, against Jose Aldo. How do you think about this fight? Do you have a, a prediction? I think Chad's going to win. You know, Chad is one of the most ta talented guys I've met. Uh, he works really hard. He's got that wrestling background, but he's also been knocking guys out. And Jose Aldo's in the same boat. In my opinion, Jose Aldo is the best pound-for-pound -pound guy in the, in the sport. And Chad, in my opinion, is the hardest guy I've fought in practice. So it's, uh, it's going to be a great fight. I, I really feel like Chad is, is, is going to shine, and I think he's going to get the win. 
and uh, the the owners, owners the questions uh, the the media and the fans talking about it's uh, the Baron situation in the especially the last event. Uh, how is your opinion about the the, the process and uh, did they change the, the opponent in the the day of fight? Practically, and uh, uh, do you think it's it's a wrong way? The MMA in general, it's the process, the cut, cut the weight process. How do you think the MMA can and uh, do uh, uh, good things to, to change the season, or do you think it's not can be changed? You know, it's going to be hard to change, just because I know coming from the wrestling world, everyone's always looking for that advantage, and so if one person is a bigger guy for the weight class because he's cutting weight, other people are going to do it to stay competitive. Uh, getting intelligent about it, making sure you're making the right choices, that's an individual thing. Uh, it's something that you have to be really intelligent about. You have to get the right people around you. And I'm not sure what happened with Brad. He's never lost this weight before. I know that he does cut really hard and he is getting older. And um, so he, he may be out, outgrowing the weight class, I don't know. But uh, it was weird. I, d I didn't know why he lost, you know, wasn't able to make the weight. And it was unfortunate for TJ, but if you're the baddest guy in the, in the world, then you should be willing to prove it. And that's what TJ did. We all saw it. And uh, uh, the question about TJ, uh, do you have a big relationship with, with him? Uh, do you think in, in the future have a possibility to fight with each other? Um, I think... You know, it's something that will come up, and if it comes up, we'll address it then. I, I don't want to fight TJ. I don't have a desire to fight him. I actually brought him into the sport, and he's been kind of like my my understudy for a long time. And I got a lot of pride in the fact that he's the best in the world right now. So, if that fight comes about, that'll be a decision that he and I will sit down and talk about, and uh, talk to our bosses, and talk to our management, and, and talk to the rest of the team. And, uh, see, see what we think, but I don't have a desire to fight, to fight TJ. And, and uh, uh, how is your opinion about your situation in the, the division? Uh, do you do you think you you can uh, can the, the follow the same way? And uh, the, maybe uh, we have a, a top fighters uh, in the, the division like uh, Dominic Cruz, and TJ Gillespie, and Hannah Brown. Uh, do you have a, a, any desire to face anyone? Yeah, all of them. <laughs> you know, I mean, I've fought Brow and, and Cruz, and I feel like I still have unfinished business with both those guys. There's other guys in the division. You know, there's the, t the talk of the fight with Kid Yamamoto and myself, and I've been a fan of Kid Yamamoto. And also, uh, you know, if you look back in the early days of my career, I was always asking to fight Kid Yamamoto because he was ranked number one and a superstar in Japan. And I was rising in the ranks and, you know, becoming a star in, in America. So that's a, a fight that people want to see. Um, you know, there's a lot of fights out there for me. So I'm just going to take them one at a time and, and make sure that I'm prepared. And uh, uh, you are a, a superstar of MMA, I think, because uh, you have so a lot of popularity in, in all countries. You come, uh, the, the, the people like you, get, I request you to take photos. Uh, and uh, if, you, if you see the UFC champions, uh, we, we have the same, the same thing. Uh, how, uh, how do you think uh, about, about this your charisma? Uh, you have a, a lot of fans in USA, especially in your hometown. Um, it's been neat, and you know, I, I, you don't really get to choose that. All I've done is try to be as real as possible, and then fight with a lot of heart and tenacity, and be friendly to everyone, and, and, and treat everyone with respect. And I feel like people really feel like they know me, and uh, from you know being in the in the public eye for a long time, I feel like they know me too. You know, I don't I don't you know, hold much back, and I and I'm you know open with my personality. I, you know, I, I like to have fun, I like to, to fight hard, I like to do a lot of different things, and I think the people understand me, and so I'm, I'm very fortunate to be one of the folks that stands out. And the, the last question, uh, how do you think about, about Brazil, the Brazilian fans, and also the Japanese fans too, because uh, we have a, a big event in, in Saturday, and uh, do you, the, if you can, do you can send a message for the both, both, both uh, countries? You know what? I feel uh, I feel like there's a common thread that unites all people in 
in the mixed martial arts world especially, you know, there's a lot of respect involved with our sport and um, it's fun to come to different countries and, and feel the love and it's also fun to fight against opponents like Mizugaki and like Jose Aldo and, and you know, have fans that, that uh, get behind them and then also show respect to you. I think it's a great thing that we have. It's a, it's a very healthy rivalry that each country is starting to have and I'm um, fortunate enough to have fans from all over. So thank you to Japan, thank you to Brazil, and USA, I love you, and all the world.